the very worst of German war crimes. The horrors they committed in 2014 and the horrors they're committing still in 2024. And finally, the worst for last, whatever this is. I just can't believe the stuff they've done sometimes. This really did seem like a Mojo Top 10 video. Germany literally just said Brexit means Brexit. They don't care if Scotland was trying to remain. They still would have to pay. When the war between the European Union and United Kingdom starts and I have to kill Scotland. <laughs> There's just a lot of these memes going on right now. You know, at least they probably appreciate the hesitancy. Who would win? 1700s British, British soldiers versus, um, a U.S. Uh, Navy, US Navy. guided missile oh. destroyer. Begin. Okay, let's see exactly how uh, easy it is for the British soldiers to be able to defeat. Okay, well, yeah. Wow. I guess we should have saw this coming. Literally just a game of civilization out here. Like I've said in the past, all it takes is like one aircraft carrier to be sent back in time and it would literally rule the world. Minus fuel and all the resources and stuff. Invent a new sport. Spread it around the world. Be bad at it. That's how the British roll. Invent new sport. No one else wants to play it. You're world champions. That's how the Americans roll. Meanwhile, take the American sport. Remove all protective gear. Everyone else is too scared to play it. Still lose to the Kiwis. Refuse to elaborate. And leaves. Finally, that's how the Australians roll. I think we've collected them all we have finally perfected this meme australia's sports logic in the winter short shorts and a singlet in the summer long pants long sleeves and a jumper maybe it's just because they're still confused about which is the hot season in australia maybe they're forgetting they live in the land down under anything can be edible if you're brave enough how italians are making a meal of invasive crabs blue crabs with no natural predators have been disrupting prized shellfish populations so revenge is they're now on the menu congratulations you literally played yourself pov giving away free uh, um, uh, I don't, I cannot believe you've done this. I, I don't even know what to say about this one. That's insane. Did you know that 100% of Floridians don't live in Armenia? You know what? I don't know if this is actually true, though. You're saying there's not a single person from Florida that lives in Armenia? Like, I know the ratio is probably 99.9%, .9%, but there's actually, honestly, gotta be one. Shooting weapons at Russian fleet. Come join the event. It's actually happening right now. Apparently, there was a Russian submarine just off the coast of Florida recently. Of course, the people of Florida of responding in the only way they know how. How did tourable nuke cucks think it is? We can't go to war with a country that has nukes. Nuclear wars cannot be won and must be fought. Our nukes are for deterrence only. We can't defend our allies. It's not worth risking our cities. Versus how counterforce nuke chads know it is. Our hard target counterforce strike can and will eliminate all enemy nuclear forces in under 10 minutes globally. Our fast attack subs are tailing the enemy's missile subs as we speak, ready to torpedo them on command. Finally, we will prevail without losing any cities. It's about time the public started taking the right stance on this stuff. There was actually a great game called DEFCON that taught me all about this. Submarines change everything. How do I increase my share of population in the workforce? My country of 70 million only has 14 million workers. My GDP dropped from 1.3 trillion to 400 billion. Oh, is this who posted that on the Hearts of Iron 4 subreddit? It wouldn't surprise me if like modern day leaders are trying to get advice from Paradox Games. I mean, I would just try to use those gaming strats in real life too. Me with my fully stocked caravan going on holiday in Southern Europe for three weeks. Here we have the Dutch tourists and uh, the local economies of Spain, Portugal, France, and Italy. I'm actually surprised France was a clue. What about Greece? Literally the Dutch just spreading the wealth. Thank you, Netherlands. Oh, wait a second. Um, that, uh, maybe that's why Greece isn't included here. My mom was literally just telling me not to go to Greece because of that. We're singing his song about defeating the invading English, says Scotland. Aw, sweet. We're singing his song about defeating the invading no-no Germans, says England. Um, hello, human resources? Is that seriously what's going on right now? Meanwhile, Spain be like, you guys have lyrics in your anthem because we would need another civil war just to agree on the first verse. Basque is an Indo-European language, small brain. Basque Basque is a language isolate, slightly bigger. Basque is a Denny Caucasian language, so are Chinese and Sumerian. What? Finally, Basque is the only surviving Neanderthal language. Quora once again with the galaxy brain questions here. That would be an interesting twist. Gotta admit, this place has always fascinated me. It's managed to survive for so long. Me, when I defeated Turk in an online argument about the origins of yogurt. I have avenged my ancestors and the gods of Olympus look at me with pride. I really wish I had this ability. Like, I wish I just had like 1% Greek ancestry. That way I could literally feel like this every single day of my life. These European bad people said, sorry, we don't tip, laughed, and walked out. Close the borders to Europeans now. Oof, a zero on a bill that's $288. I do believe tipping in the U.S. is out of control right now, but in restaurants, I think it's still fine. I mean, that's just how it works here, unfortunately. That's just what we have to probably continue to do. But all the other places that do this, like, we need to stop it. Just stop 
doing it. We all need to unanimously stop. It's just going to keep getting worse. I'm sitting here trying to think of a place that doesn't ask for a tip, and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with it. You're not! Restoring the Third Reich! You're literally Filipino! Apparently this is a problem in the Philippines. Actually, to be honest, apparently this is a problem literally everywhere. I unfortunately saw stuff like this in Mexico everywhere. Average Danish spicy ramen fan literally can't handle it versus average Swedish spicy ramen fan. They don't care. They actually want it to be spicier. This is after the news came out that the Danish are saying this South Korean cuisine is way too spicy. Literally the Danish government themselves are recalling the food. Reminds me of this tweet literally two years ago, this man thinking it was only white people spicy. That's where they get you. I've had that happen to me too. I like spicy, but if I'm in like a certain neighborhood that, you know, it just looks like the food wouldn't have a whole lot of spice, I'll go extreme. Anyways, apparently it is pretty spicy. I, I want to try it. How do I order this? Like, I need to get my hands on some. UK to be blasted by 48 hour, 26 degrees Celsius heat wave. Five English cities are facing this right now. British people, when the temperature hits the high 70s. I feel like we have to review memes like this every summer. Remember, the houses are built very differently in the UK. Although I am literally from California, I have no room to talk. Like, 57 degrees is cold to me. Fahrenheit, sorry, Fahrenheit. <laughs> the Panzer 68. This is the Swiss main battle tank, which happens to have dozens of technical problems. Gearbox did not allow for shifting into reverse while the vehicle was moving. To make things even worse, the radios used in the tanks tended to interfere with the turret control, resulting in uncontrolled turret movements whenever the radios were used at full power. Switching on heating system could also lead to the main gun firing. I guess this is why Swiss tanks aren't in like world of tanks or war thunder tank games in general maybe they are but i've never seen them. i guess a better way to put this is i guess this is why no one really talks about swiss tanks you'd think they'd be really good you know swiss army knives just make that into a tank an armored vehicle army knife first they came for the t80s and i did not speak out because i was not a t80 then they came for the t90s and i did not speak out because i was not a t90 then they came for the t72s and i did not speak out because i was not a t72 then they came for the t64s i did not speak out because i was not a t64 then they came for the t62s and i did not speak out because I was not a T-62. Then they came for the T-55s. I did not speak out because I was not a T-55. Then they came for the T-54s. I did not speak out because I was not a T-54. Finally, they came for the T-34s and there was no one left to speak out for me. Then that I am the T-34, I guess. Oh no, speaking of tanks. We're talking about how the Russians are apparently now using T-34s in their invasion of Ukraine because, well, they're kind of running out of tanks. They need more of them. Imagine being a T-34 forced to fight against your former crew's great-grandchildren. Because, yeah, back in those days in World War II, obviously, Russia and Ukraine were both part of the Soviet Union. The U.S. is over. Russia just sailed three ships to Cuba. And NATO is scared, but they won't admit it. And it's because of the new multipolar order. Meanwhile, NATO having a little meeting. Yeah, sure, whatever, dude. Goes back to the meeting like nothing ever happened. Yeah, just don't let them see the tears. It was definitely a nice try to do that anyways. They sailed three ships to Cuba. Didn't the Spanish do that in the 1400s? That that isn't a big accomplishment. Talk about like 600 years late. Scotland fans, there's no toilets and it takes three hours to get a pint. We lost the match. Let's buy cans and piss in a bush. Meanwhile, England fans, match begins in two hours. Let's fucking riot. It's just so fascinating as an American on the outside. And I thought certain American sports teams had like a crazy fandom. I don't think it compares to this. The crazy chance y'all do too. US plans to turn Taiwan Strait into drone hellscape against China. Welcome to hell. Be it's actually pretty interesting because I literally just went to like a, what is that even called? It was like a military showcasing Memorial Day here in California. The stuff I was finding out about drones and the amount of research they're doing about like tactical drones, how to counteract drones, there's just a whole lot of things that are changing about warfare right now. Both Australians and Americans like inventing sports and being the best in the world at them. Note the quotations. So I'm assuming this is like the British back here. A guide to Western Europe. On one side we have ADHD. On the other, um, um, there's a, it's a, a, yeah. So this is apparently the new spectrum, and I'm, at first I thought it was like kind of just a geography thing. I mean, you got like Southern Europe, Italy, Spain, Greece, then there's like Ireland and the UK. But then there's Portugal here, the lowland countries, France, the Swiss and Austrians aren't too far away from each other. And things start to shift a lot once you get to Germany and specifically the Nord, oh, this is all Nordics. Okay, this is just Nordic countries, and then the low, I think this is still just kind of a geography thing, but I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> What even is this? Is this actual data? I'll be honest, I'm definitely closer to the right, probably. Now, how does the horseshoe theory fit into all this? To my patrons this month, thank Lucas, you. Lucas, the Canadian goose from Avaka. <laughs> Zany boy. Sorry, I cannot sleep without douche. Amateur archaeology. Fat Carmel. Norwalk. Connor. The beautiful Megan. Frederick Tiblin. Wizarder. Kansas. Jerry. Denver. King Bear. Hey, Lucas Prentice. Lugsenberg. And the next hammer. 7 6